welcome to the video where we're going to be talking about uh, volumes, washers, methods, well, in this case with a shift. So let's talk about a very interesting example, which is pretty complicated. So grab some pencil and a paper to write a lot. They want us to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves. y equals x minus 2 to the 4 and 8x minus y equals 16. About what? About x equals 10. So let me start sketching the graph. Step 1. I, that's how usually I teach. Step 1. Figure out the 2D picture first. So y equals x minus 2 to the 4 is the fourth power function it actually looks like a parabola if you use the graphic calculator you will see that it's something like this nice looking parabola if you plug x equals 2 y will give you zero so that's the point over here 2 0 now uh, y equals 8x minus 16 is a line you can figure out the points to draw this line and if you plug 2, you'll get 0 as well. So now you can see they will intersect like so. Here it is. Now I see the area. Here's my 2D area, which we will be rotating. Second step, figure out a 3D picture. So that's the most important here to figure out what we are rotating about. Y, uh, X equals 10. X equals 10 is somewhere, say, over here. That is my x equals 10 oh, vertical line. So how to figure out the 3D picture? Let me make more space over here. To figure out the 3D picture, I will copy the 2D picture, imagining that x equals 10 is a mirror. So I can see it's going to be a point over here. And then they're going to be a line. And then they're going to be uh, this parabola piece. So this in yellow is the copy of the original 2D picture. It's a bit fatter, but it's fine. And now to help your brain to imagine, to help your brain to imagine that this is a 3D picture, let me move it to the right, perfect. You need to draw some circles. And then your brain finally starts realizing that it is indeed a 3D object. Look at that. You can even use dash if you want to imagine that this is a solid object. If you want one more circle, you can do one more circle. But now imagine that even though outside is solid there is a hollow part inside the empty part inside as you can see it's basically like a tunnel inside or maybe a volcano imagine a volcano so this piece in the white is empty now step three so we did the most important steps now step three choose the case is it the y case or the x versus the x case which integral we're going to be plotting the y or dx. Students sometimes memorize that if rotation happens about x-axis, then you have a dx case. And if rotation happens about y-axis, you have a dy case for washer and disk method, not for shell method though. But we are rotating about x equals 10. Then ask yourself, x equals 10 parallel to which axis? x-axis or y-axis? Well, it's vertical, so it's parallel to y-axis. And that's one of the hints that it's going to be a dy case. The traditional way to see it is to draw a sample disk. So somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter, I'm going to draw a sample slice. So imagine you're a ninja and you're slicing it. What kind of slice you will get when you finish slicing it? I'll get this picture, right? This is not a disk, by the way. So let me uh, explain it for you over here. A disk will slice of the disk uh, will be solid while we getting something with the hollow part inside so that's a washer or i like calling it a ring disk versus ring can you say the r sound ring or a washer that's why we call uh, books use read probably called washer method so since it's a washer we're going to be using a formula pi r squared minus pi r squared, which I'm going to go to soon. But first, let's figure out where the thickness of this sample washer will be projected. And by projected, I mean, if I'm asking you how thick is this washer or ring, will you tell me it is 
uh, x value thick no that's the length or how wide it is or so basically how big the radius is if i'm asking you how thick it is you will tell me oh it's y unit thick so the projection is like a shadow where the thickness going to be shadowing onto x axis or y axis since it's projecting onto y axis it's going to be dy case since we chose dy case we know it's going to be integral from c to d pi r squared minus pi r squared that is because we have a washer case so the empty part minus no the solid part minus empty part and dy at the end so we need to remember that y so we integrating with respect to y that's why c is y and d is y the biggest radius will be in terms of y and the smallest radius will be in terms of y everything should be consistent First, let's figure out C and D. C and D is the height of your object on the vertical scale. Well, I can see that my object, 3D object, starts at zero. But where does it end? It ends somewhere over here. And what this height is. To find this height, I need to find this point of intersection. This point is zero. Definitely, I already know that C is zero points. C is zero. That's not a secret. But we need to find D. To find D, I will build a system of equations. Here are my two equations. And I need to rewrite them, actually. Since I just told you that we're going to be talking about everything in terms of Y, I need to find those equations in terms of uh, solve for X. So let's solve each equation for X. Equation number one and equation number two becomes, they become. So equation number one. You can put it in the step number three if you want, rewriting the equations. y equals x minus 2 to the 4 and 8x minus y equals 16. Solve for x. The case on the right is easier. 8x is 16 plus y. x, x is going to be 2 plus y over 8. That's my new equation number two. What about the first one? I'm going to use a force root on both sides and it gives me x minus 2 on the right hand side. Then x will be force root of y plus 2. And that is my new equation number one. See, we solved for one. Uh, we solved for x, so everything now is in terms of y like we want. Let's find intersection. Intersection can be found using the system of equations. Since left hand sides are equal, we can write down that right hand sides are equal as well and solve it. So it's going to be a force root of y plus 2 equals 2 plus y over 8. Let's collect on the same side. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. So we are going to have... Let's rewrite y to the 1 quarter instead of 4 root of y minus y over 8 equals to 0. Let's factor out y with the lowest exponent. That's 1 quarter. It becomes 1 minus y. And then can you calculate by yourself or you need my help? y 1 minus 1 quarter because factoring out means dividing. So I need to subtract the exponents. That is going to be... 3 quarters equals to 0. And I get two solutions here. Two solutions. Y is 0. This is the one we knew. That's C. And then Y to the 3 quarters. Oh, that's not. We lost 8 somewhere. So it's going to be 1 minus. You see, it was division by 8. So I did not divide by 8. 1 minus y to the 3 quarters divided by 8 equals to 0. Solve that one. Let's multiply it by 8. It's going to be 8 equals y 3 quarters. And now you need to raise both sides into the 4 thirds, right? So 4 thirds, 4 thirds to solve for y. y will be 8 to the four thirds oh mm. 
raised to the four thirds, you, you should not write both ways. Either you're raising it to the four thirds, like so, or you're writing it with the root four thirds. So a to the four thirds is actually a cubic root. That's what I wanted to write to the fourth power. Why it's better to write it this way? Because eight cubic root is two, right? So it's just two to the four. And two to the four is 16. We found D. So A, not A, C. C is zero. D is 16. And we can finally start building the integral. That's going to be step number five. Step number five, we're building the integral. I can factor out pi outside, and it's going to be from zero to 16. Now, we're going to have pi r squared minus pi r squared, but pi was factored out. But I want to explain you again what are those pi r squared minus pi r squared means. Here they are. The first pi r squared is imagining that, this is like literally a disk method. Here it is. Imagine that this volcano we're looking at is solid. So we're going to find the volume of the solid 3D object. So we're going to fill in the volcano. The pi r squared with a smaller radius will be only the volume of this white piece in 3D. That is the empty 3D object. And then the difference will give us the volcano with the empty part inside. Make sense? So we're going to find two volumes and find a difference of them. The biggest radius pi r squared will be this radius, the big one, from the edge to the middle to the axis of rotation. That is capital R. The small radius, let's put it in pink, will be this radius, the inner part, only capturing the white piece, the empty part. That will be small r. But each piece will require to know the material of the area between two grams. Let's figure out why. So first we're working with solid. Solid part. R capital R should be raised to the second power R squared capital R represents this area all of it so all the object right all of it imagining it's all full what is this area since we're working with case two that's the y case we're gonna have right minus left um, idea of the integral right remember that it's going to be right function on the right or graph of the function right minus the function on the left. It's always bigger minus smaller, top minus bottom or right minus left. What is on the right? X equals 10 is on the right. What is on the left? We have two graphs on the left. So now you probably are thinking and confused which one should we use. Should we use the blue one? The blue one, which is uh, a line. Or should we use this parabolic thing, which was a fourth power parabola, right? Well, you should remember that we try to cover all the area. So you always look, the capital R should take the outside radius, the biggest one. And the biggest one is x equals 10. So we, no, the biggest one is the line in blue. Stop moving. Hmm, interesting. Should zoom out. Oh, I see. So we will take x equals 10, that's the function on the right, minus this line. What this line is? This line is y equals 8x minus 16, but we should remember that we rewrote it, that's uh, line number 2, as 2 plus 8 over x. So 10. That was the line on the right, minus, open parenthesis, 2 plus y over 8. Does it make sense? The one on the right minus the one on the left, and that's solid part. So everything is filled in. Now let's do the empty one. Can you do the empty one by yourself? Let's see. Find this middle of the rotation. That's the axis of rotation. Shoot the laser. That's my small radius. And stop when you hit the middle piece. Stop when you hit the middle piece. Because we want to find the volume of only the empty part. The one in white color right now. Where does it stop? 
So this is the area. This is how it looks like in pink. This, in this, in this, in this, in this, in this, in this. Only the empty part. Which functions in, function is on the right? Still x equals 10. But function on the left now is this one in green color. That's the part of the parabola, uh, the, the force power, power parabola, which we solved for x. That was equation number one. Here it is. So it's going to be 10 minus, 10 minus, parentheses, and the other function was 2 plus the force root of y, close parentheses. And this is my integral, pi r squared minus pi r squared, solid minus empty, each radius, each radius was a function of y. First, we had big radius. That's the one that fulfilled the whole volcano. It was completely solid. The other one is a small radius. That's the one that represents the empty part of the volcano. Subtracting it, you find a difference. That's a pretty cool idea. Uh, well, maybe you can stop the video because after this, basically the algebra comes. But if you want, I can help to solve this integral. First, I would simplify everything inside. That's going to be two, 10 minus 2, that's 8 minus y over 8 squared minus two minus, 10 minus 2 again. That's 8 minus a uh, fourth root of y squared brackets dy. How you integrate that? You will use the square of difference formula from 0 to 16. 8 times 8 is 64 minus 8 times 1 over 8, that's 1 going to be 2y because double product plus y squared over 64 minus open parenthesis 64 minus 2 times 8 16 a force root of y plus when you're squaring the force root of y it just becomes square root brackets dy so i will have brackets outside Something cancels out, 64 and minus 64, nothing else cancels out, so you can start integrating using power rule. Pi is outside, no integral sign anymore. Minus 2y squared over 2, so this 2 will cancel out, that's nice. Then, um, plus y cubed over 3 times 64, minus, don't forget to change the signs, minus minus gives you plus, 16 how to integrate this function that's y to the one quarter and this one is y to the one half y to the one quarter one over four plus four over four is five over four power rule dividing by five over four finally one half gives you three halves dividing by three halves instead of plus c i'll put huge brackets remember we're multiplying by pi outside a bar from 0 to 16. Carefully plug in the numbers and I prepared the exact answer over here for you. The exact answer multiplied by pi and the approximate answer multiplied by pi and you also can figure out that your pi is 3.1459 approximately multiply by that and you'll get 350 approximately units cubed because it's a volume of the object we created from rotating the bounded area which we created in 2D, but we rotated about x is, x equals 10, and that's how the 3D object was created. Hopefully you did not get lost. If you did, let me know. And uh, see you in my next video, where I'm gonna be showing more examples like this. Good job for watching.